2 Kings 2, verse 1, it says, And it came to pass, when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Terry, here I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophet that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha, and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yeah, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elijah, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophet that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. Fifty of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. <clears throat> and they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither, so they too went over on dry ground. came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee, before I be taken away from thee. And Elijah said, I pray thee that a, a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be unto thee, but if not, it shall not be so. It came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of uh, fire, and parted them asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elijah saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel, the, said the, the horsemen thereof, and he saw him no more. And he took hold of the, his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophet, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. They came to meet him and bowed himself to the ground before him. That's what we read. Now, several things you could say about these verses of Scripture. It talks about uh, them going to Bethel and going to Jericho and going to Jordan. That's a study within itself. Uh, and if you'll study this, they went back. They went right back from Jericho to Jordan and ended right back up in Bethel. Bethel was a picture of the house of God. Joshua was a picture of the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, death of Christ in Jericho of course, it's a place of fragrance, and so all of that ties in. That's a very good thought. I thought about in these verses here, it said, Ask what I shall give thee, and Elijah asked for, or Elijah asked for a double portion of the Spirit of the power of God. My, what a thing to ask for. Remember when my dad was passing away? When dad was passing away, I was standing by in there, and he, he sent everybody out and asked me to stay in there, and he told me some things and, and uh, that he wanted, and some things about the in church and things like that. And, kind of brought me up to date on things uh, before he passed him. And I'll never forget, uh, I looked at him and I said, Daddy, if I had anything or one thing to ask for, if I could ask for one thing for you to give me, what brought that on? He said, I'm sorry I hadn't ever left, I wasn't going to leave you nothing, not leave you much, uh, nothing and, and all. And I said, well, if I had one thing to ask for, I'd ask for another portion of that Spirit of God that I've seen upon him as he preached the Word of God. My, what, a, what a request to ask for, double portion. Of course, you know, verse 11 deals, uh, you can picture it, and it deals kind of with the rapture and all those things. But I, I just want to pull a thought out of verse 14. And if you, if you remember verse uh, 7, uh, 50 men of the, of the prophets went down and stood, and they're watching. They're down at Jordan. They're watching to see what's going to take place. And they saw Elijah smote the waters, and they departed. They saw Elijah go up, just like Elisha did. But you come down to verse 14, and Elisha, he, Elisha, took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And of course, the waters departed, and these men said, The same God that rested on Elijah doth rest on Elisha. Well, I thought about that too. 
But wouldn't it be good the same God and the same power of God that rested on our forefathers would rest on us today? The same power of God that we've seen in the churches in the past, wouldn't it be good if we could see that same power of God working in our midst? But he asked the question. He said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And I'm going to talk to you a, minute, a few minutes on where's God. Where is God? Well, think about that in these days we had. Sometimes you go through crises and you think, where's God? Where's God in this? Sometimes we go through tragedies and hardships and difficulties in our life, and we ask the question. My, my daughter-in-law, she just lost her daddy, and, uh, and she asked, uh, I, I heard her, she said, uh, where's God in all of this, you know? And we ask him questions, and, and we question things sometimes. We look at our world today, we think, where's God? Where's God? How long is God going to put up with this? He, he didn't put up with Solomon Gomorrah. He didn't put up with some other things. He asked the question, where's God in the midst of our lives? Where's God uh, in our church? Where's God in our country? And we ask that question so many times, where is God? I, I thought about, just quickly, uh, I thought about several places you can find God. Uh, you can find Him at the brook. Well, Elijah, my friend, he was 90 miles from nowhere. And my friend, guess what? God showed up every morning and every evening. You can find, you can find him at the barrel. Thought about the one when that's the Jerry Pat. Last lunch, only one once, cooked it for the man of God. But guess what? Thank God every day, every day, God showed up at the barrel. I thought about the, bar, the battle, David, the untrying circumstances. It looked like defeat. But God showed up in the battle and helped David. You think about the little boy's lunch. Five loaves, two fishes. Nobody could do anything with that. What is that among so many? I tell you, when God showed up and got a hold of it, he fed the five loaves and took that and fed the multitude. Took up much left over. I thought about a lot of things you could find about God. But let me give you something here. Now, we've got this concept that God is just sitting on the throne up at the right hand of the Father, and he is. That's where he's at. And uh, But he's sitting on the throne, and that's our concept of God. But let me give you just a few things that I run a little reference on and hope it to be a blessing to you. I thought about, first of all, God's above us. God is above us. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 39, he said, Know therefore this day, and consider in that heart, that the Lord, he is God in heaven, above and upon, uh, upon the earth, there is none other. He said, God is above us, uh, sitting on the throne, uh, looking down uh, upon us. Uh, my friend, he's there. Uh, and I, I thought about this, and I've shared this with you before, uh, but I thought about God. Can you imagine God's in heaven, uh, and all the activities that's going on, on in heaven. They, uh, they said the, the cherubims and all is sitting there hollering, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. They, and all the saints of God that's went on before us, they, they're there in heaven. They, in fact, I was thinking coming up the road, they, all the folks that has done, done went in front of me, Miss Janet, that makes me really want to get the hood of heaven, amen. They, uh, my friend, I buried five preachers this year uh, and I buried two preachers' wives uh, and I, uh, that we used to start, we started out with. I told a preacher friend of mine, I said, me and you are the only two left. Uh, that we started out with, and if you want to go first, it's fine with me, amen. That, uh, my friend, but we think about God, that, and all the people in heaven, and all the angels, and the activities, and, and the place of heaven, and Jesus, uh, God, uh, that we look to, he's in charge uh, of all that. Uh, then you drop down into the atmosphere. You think about all the stars, and the moons, and the planets, uh, the sun, and all that's going on. God uh, is looking over that. The Bible said they're held in store uh, by the power of his word. You know why the sun shines? God tells it to, my friend. And so and then you drop on down to the atmosphere and you find the birds and have the air and all the planes and things that's flying in the atmosphere. And you know what? God sees all that. I remind you what he said in the book of Matthew. He said, not one sparrow falls that God don't know it. Boy, I tell you, the CNN don't even know that. Amen. But every time a little sparrow falls, God sees that. He keeps up with that. Then you drop down to this earth. And my friend, all the activities that's going on this earth, uh, all the uh, the planes, uh, 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 the trucks and the cars and the boats uh, and all the manufacturing and the people and everything that's going on uh, in the chaos of this earth. Uh, but God sees every bit of that. Uh, but you know what? I tell you something better than that. Uh, he knows exactly where you live. Uh, he knows your address. Uh, he knows you by name. Uh, he knows all that. I'm talking about a God uh, that's above us, uh, my friend, and watching over us. Uh, and He's there, my friend, uh, my friend 
into control and watch over our lives. I'm glad there's a God that's above us looking down from heaven. Can't get this thing unbuttoned, but I'll get it. My friend, listen, I'm glad there's a God above us to guard us. He sees what's going on. It's kind of like a mother eagle. Uh, mother eagle is part and flies. Uh, them little old, uh, little old babies get up there and get up on the edge. Uh, she'll swoop down there and knock them off. Uh, and my friend, they'll just fly up and carry on trying to learn to fly. My friend, it looks like it's over. But I tell you, before they hit the ground, uh, Brother Slick, uh, that old mother eagle swoops right in there and picks them up. Uh, you know what? I'm glad God's got his eye on us uh, and think he's up there. He's guarding us. He's protecting us. Hey, you know, it's, it's kind of like a parade. You ever go to a parade? When you stand on the sidewalk at a parade, all you can see is right there what's in front of you. You know what's done gone. You don't know what's coming. But all you can see is right there what's in front of you. But I'll tell you what, you get up on a two-story building and look down, you can see that thing from the first, the middle, and all the way to the end. But I'll tell you, we got a God that's above us. He knows this thing from the start to the finish. And thank God I'm glad he's in control. So where's God? He is above us, my friend, to guard us. Then I'll say something else. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 33, not only is he above Above us to guard us, but he's beneath us, underneath us uh, to support us. Uh, the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 33, verse 27, the eternal God uh, is thy refuge, and underneath uh, are his everlasting arms. Uh, not only is he, uh, my friend, above us, uh, my friend, to guard us, but he's underneath us to support us and hold us up. Amen. He said underneath. I looked that word up underneath, and you know this. That word underneath means below the bottom. <laughs> you ever heard somebody say, I'm on the bottom? <laughs> well, I don't care how far and how deep a bottom you get on. Underneath, below the bottom. His hand is still there, and he's still holding you up. He's still got you. We're in his hands. He's holding us. He's supporting us. I tell you, the Bible said that he held the world in the span of his hands. How in the world could you fall out of a hand that big? But my friend, his hands is big. It's there. And my friend, he's there to hold us up and support us. And he said he wouldn't put more as we could bear. I'm glad that we have a God that's below us, underneath us, and he's holding us up and supporting us. I remember uh, my mind just jumped to an illustration uh, of Kevin when Kevin was little. Uh, and I've said this before, but when Kevin was little, I mean, just a little old bitty fella, uh, we was in a meeting over in North Carolina, and we went to eat with these people. We'd never been to their house before, and we went to eat with these folks, and, and, and we, we pulled up the van, and, and Slick, I, I, I let old, old Kevin out. He wasn't that high. And I sat him down on the ground, and he took out across the yard. Uh, well, about that time of coming around the house, uh, big old St. Bernard, uh, about three times big as Kevin was, uh, come plopping around the house. It wasn't going to bother him, but he didn't know that. And my friend, he saw that big old dog, and he turned around slick, and my friend, he ran right toward me, and I reached down with my hands and picked him up, had him up in my hands. That dog went running right up to him. He looked down, that dog smiled, like, look who you have to whoop to get me. Look where I'm at. I'm in his hands. Boy, ain't you glad when the hounds of hell looks like it's over, and he tells us we're going to fall through. I'm glad underneath underneath it's his everlasting hand and he's there to hold us and support us well not only is he underneath us to support us he's above us but he's behind us he is behind us. Let me read you something in the book of Exodus. Exodus, I'll have to find these verses. Exodus chapter number 14. The Bible says that in Exodus chapter 14 and verses number 19, he said, And the angel of God went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. That's a picture of God. He was leading them, but he went behind them. Boy, aren't you glad God is behind them? You know the old saying is, I got your back. Amen. Uh, God's got our back. Amen. He's behind us. I can't look. I can't see a lot of time behind us. Some of these new cars you got, you'll kill yourself if you try to look behind you. If you didn't have a little camera down there, you'd get killed. Amen. Some of them you can't see. But you know what? That old saying, I've got your back. I remember when I was a kid. Some of you young folks know y'all don't pay no attention to this. But I remember when I was a kid, I liked to fight. 
Uh, I did. I, I, I probably told you that before, but I did. I liked to fight. We, you know, back in them days, you just fight and get over it and hug each other and go on. You know, we, it didn't fight. You know, somebody shoot you the next day. It wasn't like that. We just fight for the fun of it. Uh, and we always like to fight. I, sometimes I like to fight now. I, sometimes I see people I like to whoop now. Amen. Uh, uh, but uh, 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 sometimes I, I, I just that was just in our nature. We just fight and, and get, if we got a newborn in school, we just we'd pick a fight. Uh, and we was all buddies, but we just liked to fight. Uh, and I never will forget had a big old boy come to school slick uh, and, I, I, and we got together and I thought we'll, we'll, we'll break him in uh, so we went down there uh, and my friend these boys three of us uh, uh, three of them and myself we went down there and my daddy always taught me if you're going to fight if you're going to win a fight the best way to win get the first lick Amen. Get the first lick, get his attention. Uh, but you know what? Went down there, walked up. I didn't even waste no time. I just bopped him right upside the head. Uh, and about that time, I uh, had uh, uh, three or four others here. They jumped on me. Uh, and my daddy was wearing me out. Uh, and I thought, man, I kept turning around looking. Them boys, I seen them. They was gone. It was with me. Uh, I said, man, I thought you had my back. Uh, they run off. Uh, they said, man, we we seen that. We wasn't fooling with that. You know what? They forsook me. Uh, they wore me out. Uh, and I went home and mother said, what in the world happened to you? I said, the boys that had my back left me by myself. And you know what? I'm glad God said, I'll never leave you. He's behind us. He's got our back. He sees what's coming. He sees what we don't see. He, we don't get blindsided because he is behind us to get our back. <laughs> Amen. Uh, don't go, don't tell the preacher that I fight all the time, amen. But, but anyway, uh, uh, my friend, he's above us to guard us. He's underneath us to support us. He's behind us. He has our back. But not only that, he is before us to lead us. In the book of Isaiah chapter number 45, Isaiah chapter 45 at verses number 2. Let me read it to you. Isaiah, I got a new Bible. I, I, I hate preaching I have a new Bible. But I, Isaiah chapter 45 verse 2. He said, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. God said, not only will I be above you to guard you, not only will I be below you to support you, not only will I be behind you to get you back, but I'm going to be in front of you to lead you and guide you in the paths of righteousness. Boys, you're glad we got God out there leading us, leading us and directing us and following our path and doing what he... I remember when I was in Vietnam, we had what we call... I traveled with the alert team. There's 11 of us. We traveled and they'd drop us in somewhere and uh, we would we would uh, secure a landing zone for troops coming in or supplies coming in and, and there was just 11 of us together and they'd drop us in and, and when there's just 11 of you in Vietnam, if you boys have been to Vietnam, you'll know if there's 11 of you, you, you love every one of them. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> And, and, but we had what we called when we was humping through the boonies and all. We had what we call we had what we called a point guy, a point man. And he was the second man. The first man had a had a machete, and he was cutting through uh, the jungle, and cutting through all of that stuff. You don't understand that because y'all don't have no jungle up here. But over there, it was so thick you couldn't see the back of this church uh, from where we're standing. And so the front guy he would cut through. And, and he would cut his way through. He was the lead man cutting the trail for us. But behind him, the very next guy, he was what we called the point guy. His, his eyes was for him and the guy in front of him. And he walked and he had that gun and his eyes was going to and fro. And my friend, he was leading us and guiding us and he would tell that guy left or right and he was watching for snipers. He was there. He was leading and he was pointing the way. Boy, aren't you glad we've got a God that my friend's got his eyes out under. He's leading us. He can see farther than we can see. He can see what's coming. He sees what's around the corner. He sees what's on the next side of the mountain. He sees what's on the other side of the Ain't you glad we got a God that's leading us and guiding us and protecting us in this day that we live. Amen. I don't know about you, boy. There's many a time, many a time I felt like kissing one of them, one of them lead guys. <laughs> when he, he steered us away, and my friend, next thing you know, there was a sniper out there somewhere, and my friend, we seen it, and my friend, we could have got blown away. Boy, you know what? You thank God for that boy that was leading you and carrying you through that jungle. I'm going to tell you what, there's many times I felt like just grabbing God and hugging him, kissing him real good because he led me. And if I want to go this way, and he said, no, you go this way. You do that. Huh? Amen. Boy, aren't you glad? Aren't you glad for God's leading? Let me just pop right here and just throw a little something out. If I tell you one thing's important in my Christian life, I want to be led, I want to be led by the Holy Spirit of God. Me and my wife, we went off for a few days the other day, a couple of days off, and... And we went to this restaurant, and 
we were sitting in the restaurant and, and uh, Sister Tammy, I was sitting there looking across the table and uh, these people, he's pe this man, his wife had three kids and they were sitting there, they were sitting there looking at the menu and you could tell, you could tell when they got there. <laughs> you could tell when they got there, they was in the wrong place. <laughs> they didn't have no money, they didn't have enough money to pay what, you know, what it was paying. It wasn't that expensive place, but it's probably more than they used to, especially with three kids. You know, if you got three kids, you don't go to the expensive places, amen. Uh, but they had, but we, we, they, uh, we're sitting there, and I kept watching them, and more the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. He said, he said, get their ticket, buy their meal. And I told my wife, I said, I said, I feel like the Lord wants me and you to buy their supper. And uh, she said, okay, that's fine with me. And she said, whatever you feel like. And I said, well, that's what I feel like. So I told that lady, I said, ma'am, could you do me a favor? She said, yeah. I said, get them people's ticket over there and brought it to me. And she said, I'm so thankful you did that. I said, they've been looking at that menu, trying to find something cheap. I said, I know they want to get out of here. I said, well, just give me anything. You won't let them have it. And so she, she, they took their order, and she brought me their ticket and everything. And so when we got up, I walked over. And I said, boy, these kids are really pretty. And I talked to them kids a little bit. And we walked out and left and paid the bill and left. And before we could get to the truck, that lady come flying out of there uh, come flying out of there and she said oh I don't know who you are sir uh, but said you're an angel in disguise uh, said we, we was in there rational what we was going to eat and what we was going to do uh, and said we was just going to put it on credit and got to get out of here uh, and said you know what and the little kids were standing looking at me and you know what I got such a blessing out of the head my friend you know why God led me to do that and God will bless you and you know what two days later we was in a restaurant somebody bought our meal <laughs> Now don't try that. It may not work for y'all, well, uh, my friend. But, but two days later, we sat in the mail, and the lady come around and said, there's people bought your mail. I said, who? See, they done gone. I don't know who bought it. Uh, but I told Kay, I said, man, you just can't outdo God. Uh, when you follow his leadership, oh, bless his holy name. Uh, he will guide you and lead you in more blessings uh, and more victory. Thank God that you can contain and hold on to it. I know this is Wednesday night, but get in it anyway. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm glad we got a God that leads us. And my friend, He's there in front of us to lead us. He's behind us to have our back. He's underneath us to support us. He is above us to guard us. But He's at your right hand. <laughs> Amen. Psalm chapter, Psalm chapter 16. Psalm chapter 16. Listen to this. Psalm chapter 16 and verses number 8. Listen to what he says. I'm trying to find it here. Psalm 16, verse 8. He said, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. God sits right here at our right hand. You ever heard that old saying, the right hand guy? That's my right hand guy. When I pastored a church there in, in, in Knoxville, I had two ladies in the church, but I had one special lady. She was a foreign pastor's wife. And, and, and I, I used to kid her. I said, if I could put a woman in for sister pastor, I'd put you in. She was just like a right-hand person. I could just mention. I could just, from the pulpit. I said, well, we're going to have a fellowship. She'd be right straight up there. As soon as church, up, boom, she'd be right there. Preacher, what can I do? Preacher, you want me to do that? You want me to set that up? You want me to take care of that? If, whatever I mentioned, uh, she, she'd take care of it. Said she'd be right there. Preacher, can I help you? Can I take What can I do? Uh, and you know what? And I, I just said, do, do it, you know. And she, she would do it. I mean, and you didn't have to worry about it. You'd go home, go to sleep, and just show up. It would be right. Uh, she's just like a right-hand person right there. If I needed, she was there. Uh, my friend's kind of like Moses, you know, when he held his hands up. Uh, my friend, they was there to hold his hands. As long as they held his hands up, the victory was won. When they dropped them, my friend, their defeat come. Boy, I'm telling you, ain't you glad God is at our right hand? And when we need help, when we need strength, when we need somebody to turn to, he's there. Amen. I mean, he is our right hand. He's there to protect us. If you remember, if you remember, David had one. David, when he went to battle, he had a guy right in front of him carrying the shield. That's his right hand guy. Amen. I'm going to tell you what, as a pastor, it's good to have some right-hand people. <laughs> but I'm glad I tell you, when you ain't got none, God's right there. Sitting at your right hand. That, that, that right hand means he's just there. He, he's there to, to help. You know what? God, get, whoa, just thought about this. God's sitting on the throne. He needs a right-hand guy. <laughs> Jesus said, I'll be your right-hand guy. I'll go. I'll go down there and I'll pay the sin debt and I'll come back. Boy, can't you imagine when he got back? He sat down and my friend, God looked at him and said, Well done, right hand guy. Well done, son. Boy, it's a glad we got a right hand guy and we look to and lean on and know he's there. Sometimes your right hand guy sees more than you see. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Amen. Well, let me go on. Not only that, he's not only right, our right hand to protect us, but he's around about us to shield us, 
Psalms 125. Psalms 125 and verse number 2. It says in that verse scripture, he says, As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth evermore. He's not only that, he's around us to shield us and protect us. We're, we're enclosed with him. I don't know if any of you have been up pigeon fours. I don't know if they still got them now or not, but they used to have these big old bubbles. Y'all remember them advertising them things? Anybody ever stupid enough to ride one of them things? Uh, uh, did you say you rode in one? Uh, oh, I thought you said yeah. Uh, uh, but but the, what it was, they, they'd put up on the side of the mountain, and they had these big old plastic bubbles. And you get in that thing. And I went up there and watched them, and my granddaughter said, you want to ride it, Papa? I said, ain't no way. I said, that bubble would bubble and bust before I got down. But they rolled it. They had fun. And, but you get inside that bubble, and they push you off down this bank. And, of course, it rolls down into a big old field. And, you know, you're going over rocks and dirt and sticks, everything else going down through there. And they're just a life in Jordan having a ball. They're just having a good time. You know what? That bubble shields them. And all the right places and hard places, they don't feel it because the shield is around them. And they're just laughing and having a good time because, well, well we, I don't care what's going on. God is around about us. We're shield. My friend, there's a lot of bumps we don't even feel. There's a lot of hard places we don't know about because God has shielded us and he wrapped us around. And my friend, and he protects us and shields us. <laughs> you say, preacher, you think that's true? Well, what about Job? Let me preach to y'all a little bit. I forget about y'all all the time when I come over here. Uh, what about Job? You think about Job? God, the devil said, uh, he said, why are you mad? And the devil said, I've been looking to and fro somebody to serve you. No, he said, thought about Job. He said, but you got him hedged in. <laughs> you got him all shielded up, can't get to him. <laughs> you let me at him. <laughs> God said, well, you can have him, but you can't take his life. But you know what? God had Job hedged up. Even the devil knows he couldn't get in there unless you know what? If God allows us to have any rough places, if we have any rough places, it's because God allows us to have them rough places. Amen. And so He's around about us to shield us. And then I want to say something else. He's within us. He's not only He's not only above you to guard you. He's not only underneath you to support you. He's not only behind you to get you back. He's not only before you to lead you. He's not only at your right hand to protect you. He's not only around about you to shield you, but He's within you to be a companion and a comforter. John 14 says, I pray the Father, He will send another comforter that He may abide with you forever. He the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth Him not, neither knoweth Him. But you know Him, for He dwelleth in you and shall be in you. He is in us. <laughs> he came in us when we got saved, born again. He came and dwelt in our heart. I've been saved. I've been saved, let's say, 60, 63 years now, I guess it is. And you know what? Hey, yo, boy, he came in my heart. He ain't never left me since. He got in my heart. He lives within my heart. He walks with me. He talks with me. He fellowships with me. We had a little fellowship coming up the road. I turned the radio on, these people were singing a song. They sang a song about heaven. <laughs> and Brother Slick, next thing I know, I got to think about heaven. I got to think about all my friends and loved ones, my dad and my mom and different ones over in heaven. And next thing I know, I was, woo! I was having a spell coming up 75, thinking about heaven and where's it going and what all I had to look forward to. So what happened? The Holy Ghost, the presence of God, manifested itself within my heart. Well, I'm glad he's within me. He walks with me and talks with me. It's in my heart. Yeah. Lady at the motel, she activates me all the time. She calls me the crazy preacher. I don't know why she does that, but she does. And when I walked in, she called her girl. She said, oh, grab that crazy preacher again. And uh, me and Brother Bob Cato, we activate her and carry on over her. And when I got to talking, and she said, she said, preacher, what are you doing up here? I said, well, I'm preaching over to Manuel uh, tonight, and, and you're going to be there a few nights? I said, no, I'm just preaching tonight and going home. And we got to talk and everything. And, and she wanted to know where Kay was. And I said, well, she's home. And I said, and we got to talk. And I said, Friday's my anniversary. 49 years. She said, do what? I said, 49 years. She said, how in the world have you made it 49 years? I said, well, you just say yes a lot. <laughs> uh, but all serious aside, I said, I said, she got in my heart. She got inside me. And I ain't never, she ain't never left inside of me. 
I said, she's always on my mind. I sent her a text coming up the road. I said, I missed my buddy. She said, I was just fixing to text you. You say the same thing. And we talked to each other. First, you know what? She's in here. Sometimes I send her a text and she says, how do you know? How do you know when I need to text? How do you know what to say? How do you know? I said, because you're in here. Huh? You remember? Yeah, some of y'all like this. This will give y'all a little liberty. You remember old Will and Nelson? You sang that old song? You're always on my mind. <laughs> y'all remember that song? Some of you young folks have no clue. They sang them songs. Y'all don't even know what to say on them songs. Y'all sing now. I mean, they don't know. Uh, sounding like pig Latin or something. I don't know what the hell, you know. But you know, back in them days, in them days, you could understand the words. <laughs> Amen. And old Willie sang that song, You're Always on My Mind. And I called her the other day and I said, Hey, I got the answer. She said, What's the answer? What are you answering? I said, You asked me. I always know. It was I always know when to text you, call you, what to say. I said, It's like old Willie Nelson. You're on. I sung her that song. You're always on my mind. Yeah. Boy, aren't you glad God's always on her mind because He lives. <laughs> And he's always on my mind because he lives with inside. <laughs> Some of that don'ts on y'all, y'all run tailing back, amen. He lives inside of my heart. He's there to make communion and fellowship with me, amen. And then let me say this. He's always with us, always with us. To overcome uh, our loneliness, he's always with us. Hebrews says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. If you turn that around, it says, Thee forsake nor thee leave. Never will I. No matter which way you're going, he's always there. <laughs> always there. A very present help in the time of need. Probably told you this before, too. And if you hang around, you know, when you get all the time, you just tell the same stuff over and over. Anyway. <laughs> but old brother Earl Hughes, preacher friend of mine, he, he and his wife had a little fuss. This is years ago. They're both dead in heaven now. And uh, years ago, they, they was married and they had a little fuss. First got married, you know how it is, trying to get used to each other. And, and uh, she said, well, I'm going back over to Mama's. And he said, well, said, you want me to get you a suitcase down? And uh, she said, well, that'd be nice. And he got her a suitcase down with James. And, and she packed her little suitcase and everything. And he said, well, you want me to call you a taxi? And uh, she said, well, that'd be nice. And he called her a taxi. And the taxi come, blowed the horn. And, and Brother Earl said, your taxi's out here. And she came down that suitcase. He said, you want me to carry that to the car? She said, well, that'd be appreciated. So he picks up the suitcase and carries it out to the car. He opens the door, and she gets in the taxi. He throws the suitcase in the taxi, and he gets in the taxi. And she said, well, what are you doing? He said, well, I can't cook. <laughs> don't run back clean the house. And said, don't like me by myself. Thought I'd just go with you. She said, well, if you're going, ain't no use me going. And the open door got suitcased her and went back in and lived happy ever after. Ain't you glad God's with us? He ain't going to leave us. He's going to stay with us. My friend, listen, I told Kay, you can't never leave me because I ain't leaving you. I'm glad God has never left me through many dangerous toils and stuff. I have already come. Tis grace, tis grace that brought me safe thus far. And grace will lead me on that grace that them kids was talking about has never left me. Been with me all the time. <laughs> Amen. He's always with us. Well, give me one more thought. Where's God? He's above us to guard us. He's underneath us, support us. He's behind us. He's got our back. He's before us to lead us. He's uh, uh, at the right hand to protect us. He's all around about us to shield us. He's within us for companionship. He's always with us to overcome our loneliness. I'll tell you, but you know what? <laughs> He's where you can't be. I just wrote this down over in Motel. He's where you can't be. See, the church couldn't be up there in jail, but they prayed and God went up there. <laughs> he showed up in fire front, didn't he? He showed up in line then. Especially in our day now, somebody goes to the hospital, they won't let you go. But you know what? You can pray. Somebody go in there for us. I know we've got old, old brother Ernie that died at our church. His wife's name Willa May. He had surgery. And we followed him out and been her and the daughter. We followed him followed him down the hall. And, and uh, they, they, they told uh, uh, Sister Willa May and the daughter said, y'all can go and follow him down the gate. And brother Ernie said, my preacher's here. He can go too. So we went walking down the hall and stopped down there at that door. I know we'll forget this. 
he kissed Willie Mae by and told her by and told that daughter by. He said, Preacher, he said, I'll see you in a few minutes. He said, I know this is as far as y'all can go. But he said, Me and God's going through that door. And we'll be back in a little while. <laughs> Where I couldn't go. Where's why I couldn't go. God went with him. Boy, it's a glass world. God's with us where we can't go. <laughs> we may not can talk to our kids about God. But I tell you what, the Holy Ghost can go down there. Talk to them about the Lord. Ain't you glad, my friend? I'm glad that God is a very present help in the time of need. I'm glad that I serve that kind of God. Amen? Where's God? He's there. Hey, you know, <laughs> oh, just thought about this, Slick. Y'all going to accuse me of licking, listening to country music all the time. Remember old Ray Stevens used to sing that song? He's everywhere, he's everywhere, he's everywhere. Some of you young folks ain't ever heard that. Y'all listen to that. He says, he's everywhere, he's everywhere. Well, I'm telling you what, our God, where's God? He is everywhere. <laughs> he's above us, he's below us, he's in our right hand, he's around about us, he's behind us, he's everywhere. You can't, hey, anywhere you go, turn, you're going to bump into God somewhere. <laughs> you we got that kind of God. And this kind, this day we live in, where's God? He's there. I like that verse, a very present help in the time of need. A little old granddaughter, Lexi, I love her to death, and she's 18, and graduating high school this year, and you know how it is, they turn 18, and they know everything. They know everything. Well, really, when they turn 14, but, you know, when they get 18 out of school, they, they think they know everything. So she wanted to move out. So she moved out from Hollins and, and uh, moved in with her daddy. They're divorced and they moved in with her daddy. That wasn't good. And uh, she went through some hard knocks and things. You know, she didn't want to tell her what to do. I said, listen, I'm 71 years old. Still people tell me what to do. Well, Doug told me what to do. Come up here and pray. <laughs> uh, bank tells you what to do. Pay your car pay. They, 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 your, your worker tells you what to do when, what time to come in what time to get off what time to go I said you're always going to have somebody telling you what to do she's got a little bit of trouble and I don't want to go into that not bad trouble just you know just kid stuff and her daddy was a fussing at her and her mom was a fussing at her and my wife was a fussing at her <laughs> now she's my wife pride and joy now I'll tell you and uh, so I called her I said hey you need you need to come by the house and she said, what you need? I said, just come by here. I'll fix you a sandwich and we'll talk. And I said to her, she come by the house, just me and her, sit there and talk a little bit with her and everything, fellowship with her. You know what she told me? She said, Papa, she said, I'm 18 years old. She said, I know one thing. I've learned one thing. You're always here. You're always here. You've always told me, no matter what happens, you'll be here. And said, you've always been here. Said, sometimes you're on my case bad. Sometimes you're just a hug, but you've always been here. Boy, aren't you glad we got a God? He's just always been there. If I had enough time, I could go back and come up through all kinds of stuff and work hard. He's just always been there. So in these difficult days, remember that. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Forms app today, where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.